Hello and welcome back to Toy Box Tutorials. We've been away from this series for a long time, <laughs> but we're back now and my goal is to finish up this series by creating tutorials for most of the remaining Creativa toys. If you missed my Christmas video, you should check that out because I gave you a preview of some of the toy boxes that we're going to create with these tutorials in the coming months. I'm going to begin by covering the rest of the racing toys. I want to finish those up before we move on to anything else. So I'm here in my new Arundel Speedway toy box with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and today I'm going to show you how to create a path-based race, like the one I showed you a few days ago in episode 70A. To build this race, you need the Path Creator toy, the Path-Based Race Creator. And you'll find this in the Creativa Toys drawer after you've purchased it from the toy store. This toy allows you to create a vehicle race over all sorts of terrain and obstacles without the need for racetrack pieces. Now I'm going to place this toy and show you how it works, but I recommend waiting to do this until you're totally done with your toy box. It should be the last thing you do, because once you create this race, it will cause a lot of lag in the editor, just like any other path will, and it'll make it very difficult to add any new toys or move any existing toys. And that's also why you shouldn't create a race that's too big, because the longer the path, the more lag you create, and if the path is too long, you can actually crash your system. So if you want to create a massive race course, you should not use this toy. You should stick with the racetrack pieces. This toy should be used for smaller, more compact races. And because that's going to create a lot of lag, before I put this toy down, let's go ahead and put down our racing vehicles. So up under the ground vehicles, I have the snowmobile. I'm going to drop down one here. And you can drop down a second one for player two if you want, but I'm not going to do that. All right, and then we'll go back down to our toy. And let me go ahead and place one more thing just so I can show you something. You'll notice that that toy has the same texture as the blocks from the blocks drawer. So that has it. And then if we go back to the drawer for the Creativa toys, you'll notice that has it too. So you would think that you could come over here and customize this and set the theme, for example, to be frozen. I'll set that to be my theme. And that this toy would then obey that, <laughs> but it doesn't. So that doesn't work. And I'll talk a little bit more about theming in a moment. But let's go ahead and place this, and I'm gonna line up the right edge of this toy with that building that you see right above it, just to the right of the church. And we want to center this going down the street. You can see I've left enough room for this toy, which was why the placement of those buildings was kind of important. And as soon as we drop this toy, it puts us into path creator mode. And Oh, and you'll notice <laughs> it also themed the toy for us. So it does actually obey that theme. So that's good to know that if you want to theme something, you should do that ahead of time. You're not going to see it while you're creating the block um, and putting it down, but as soon as you've dropped it, it'll have that theme. All right, and then you'll notice it puts us in point creation mode for the path, and it's placed a path right here on the very front of that toy. And so what we're going to do now is drop the path points for this. And uh, let me go ahead and pull up my screen grabs to make sure I put this in the same spot, basically. So we're going to come on out, and we're basically going to follow the racetrack that we've built already. So I'm going to place the first one down here. The next one we're going to place out over this way. I think we'll drop it about right there. The next one will be right on the seam for the terrain here. And then we need to go upward. I'm 
And I'm going to place this uh, right about here, I guess. And then we'll continue following the terrain on upward. And this one I'm going to place right on the terrain seam. Now the next one comes up around this bend. And you'll notice the yellow line is kind of doing some screwy stuff here. Just ignore that. You just want to follow the path of your course. So don't get too hung up on that yellow line being in a kind of a strange place. Because you'll see it's now connected the path there and now it's got another loop going out that way. <laughs> so it's just kind of wacky. And this one we're going to put out this way. Let's see, and again I'm following the course of this but don't worry too much about exactly where this is placed. You can adjust these points a little bit more later on as we go. All right, the next one we're going to place about here. And the next one will go up here on the terrain seam. And this one I'm going to go a little bit this way with it because I want to take the player around this area up here. So we'll come up to this first terrain seam there. And we're going to bring this over this way a little bit. You don't want to go too close to that edge though because the cars will not follow this path specifically. They're going to move left and right along this path a little bit and that's fine. They should do that. All right, we'll drop this one down about here. And you kind of want to look back over the track and just kind of see where it's going, although these are kind of messed up because we've gone a little bit uh, higher in elevation. But let's see, we'll line this one up about over here. So that's why I say not to get too hung up on where these things are exactly right now because we can tweak this a little bit towards the end. And you can see it jumps. <laughs> it's confused right now because it's trying to link this up with the end of that start uh, piece over there. All right, the next one, let's put this over here just across the edge of this bridge. And the next one out over here. Uh, let's put it about like there. And uh, about there. The next one will go right up here on the edge of the cliff, like that. So we're going to take them right off the edge of the cliff. And as I mentioned in the build video, you can do a lot of the same tricks with this that you can do in the uh, with the racetrack pieces that I showed you in Toy Box Racing. You can drive off of cliffs and over gaps and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, but this one, let's see, we're going to place this right about uh, here. This doesn't line up quite the same as what I had uh, before, so we'll come out about this way. And then the next one will go over here. And by the way, just like when you're creating a regular path, the longer you place these path points away from each other, the more crazy behavior you get with the paths as far as the loops and things. So if you keep these closer together and just do more of them, that works out pretty well. All right, the next one we'll take down to the bottom edge of the water here. We'll drop this right here uh, about there. And then we'll start curving around the water here. Uh, this one, let's put this out about right uh, here. The next one, oops, will come out, let's see, about like that. And over here, we'll line this up about like that. All 
All right, and then we want to bring this around this way. And we'll put this uh, about here. And then we got to come up onto the top of this slope. And we'll put this one about like that. And then the next one over here, about like so. Next one over here, off the edge of this tree. And you can see the path now is starting to get a little bit less crazy because it's we're getting close to the end point here on the back side of that start creator piece. And for this one, let's bring this up here. About like so. Let me look back where we came from. Yeah, let's go about like that. And our last point, I'm going to try to line this up with the edge of that piece over there so that the line goes straight into that piece, which means we're going to want to be about here. And there we go. Now we can exit. And the first thing you're going to notice is that we now have a lot of lag in the editor. <laughs> but at this point we can go ahead and just kind of look at the line. And just kind of review. You'll notice it's kind of going below the terrain here. So you have to select the terrain to see exactly where that line is going. You can kind of infer it. And then this comes up. And the top of this arc does not get too close to this wall, so that's really good. It's kind of following the canyon around, which is good. And then it goes left over here, around these trees, around this way. And this is looking really, really good. We can just double check that path underneath the hill there, and that looks good. And that looks pretty smooth. Yeah, so I don't think we need to make any adjustments really. But if you wanted, you could. Like this piece over here, this is getting a little bit close to the castle, so I think I'd like this one to slide out this way a little bit more, like that. Okay, so there is our path. All right, now once you're done, and I've got more to show you, but once we're done, we can come out of the editor, we can hop on our little snowmobile, we can drive onto the racetrack start piece, and there is your start, just like with the normal racetrack start piece. It works the same way, so that's really good. Okay, now if we select this toy in spark mode or with the magic wand, what you're going to notice is there is no logic menu on the left. If you look at the menu in the lower right corner, um, Y on my Wii U does not open the logic menu. So there's no logic connections and no properties. But you'll also notice the customization menu is not available at the top of that menu, which is X on my Wii U. So you might think you can't customize this. However, this is a bug. As you see, it is customizable because I dropped that block down earlier and set the theme. So what I'm going to do is come over here and we're going to save the game. And then I'm going to quit out of this toy box and reload it. And uh, I'm going to do that offline here because this will take a few minutes and I'll be back in just a moment. 
Okay, we are back and let's go ahead and open up the editor. I have exited the toy box and reloaded it. And now if we come over here and select this, you'll notice the customization menu is available. So that's a little glitch. For some reason, when you first create it, you can't get into it. But if you save your toy box, quit out of it and reload it, then you can get in here. And you can set this thing to anything you want. I can apply and make it grass. Um, I kind of like the frozen theme. That seems to fit really well with this toy box. And so it is actually customizable. So that's important to know, but you have to know that little trick. Otherwise, you probably would think that it's not customizable. Now again, there's no logic menu available for this. However, there are some settings that are available for this, but they are not on this toy. If you come over to the path at the start of this, you'll notice I can't select it until I move off of that toy. And now if I come down, now I can select it. And if we open up the logic menu for the path creator, we go under properties. The first thing you'll notice is that the looped property is not there. They've removed it. And that makes sense because in order to have a race, it has to be looped. So they don't want to give you the option of turning that off. But there's some additional properties here under path point options. And if we open that up, what you have are four new properties. The first one is the width. So it's set to standard track by default. You can make this super narrow. You can make it wide, a double track, a triple track. You can make this as wide as you want. And it's nothing visual that you're going to see, but this controls uh, the AI cars and how wide the road, the track will actually be. There's also even a quarter track, so you can make this thing super narrow and they'll follow that path almost precisely. So that's an important property. Uh, whoops, didn't mean to close that. There's also three other properties. There's something called AI Racer Drift that you can turn on and off. There's Boost, which you can turn on and off. And there's AI Racer Jump, which you can turn on and off. And you'll notice this is for the path point properties. So these same options, exit out of that, are available on every path point for this particular path. So if we open up the logic menu for this point, you'll see we have the same options. So you can have the path point, the the racetrack path be wide at one point and very narrow at another point and you can use this property con to control how the AI cars move along the path because like I said with the standard path the cars will actually move left to right and you saw that in the actual race that I did with Anna a couple of weeks ago the cars would move off of the path they're going side to side they're basically racing as if there's a, a standard width racetrack here but by setting that property, you can actually make the AI think that they're on a double wide track or a very narrow track or whatever. And so if you want to create like a very narrow tunnel or something that these things go through, when you put the path points there at the entrance and exit of the tunnel, you can set this width to be something very narrow. And then the racetrack cars will be sure not to get stuck on the edges of the, um, the tunnel. So that's very handy. Now these other three properties, I wish I could tell you what they do. <laughs> I could not get them to work at all. Um, nothing would happen differently. So for example, AI Racer Jump, I would, I would assume that this would mean if I turn this on, that the AI racers will actually jump when they reach this point along the path. But they don't, they just drive right over it. I would assume that this property would put a boost pad here or make the AI racers boost and go faster, but neither of those is true either. And I would assume that AI racer drift, if I put this on like at a corner or a turn, would cause the AI racers to drift around that corner. That's not the case either. <laughs> 
uh, nothing seems to change when I turn these on and off. So I don't know what those do. And maybe there's some trick to getting those to work. I could not figure out what that was. But I wanted to make you aware of these because all of these path points and the path creator itself have all of these same options. So um, maybe if there's a way somebody figures out how to make them work, it can let me know. Maybe they only work on... Uh, other consoles and not on the Wii U. Maybe it's broken on all of them. I, I don't know. But I wanted to make you aware of them. Now something else you can do with these path points, if I've got it selected, you'll notice there's an option at the bottom to create a branch. So you can branch this path just like you can any standard path. But the AI racers unfortunately will not use these branches. So you can create them, but the race will not use them. So you can't use that to create any shortcuts or alternate routes for your race, unfortunately. And that seems to me like an opportunity missed because that would be a, a great thing to do. Well, I think that's it for the path-based race creator. You can use this toy to create races that aren't constrained by the limited racetrack pieces. Your race can go just about anywhere, with any kinds of twists and turns you want, even tight turns, and over any kind of terrain or obstacles that you want. This toy gives you a lot of freedom that the racetrack pieces don't, but it comes at a cost. You can't make race courses that are too long with this toy, because it has the same limitations as the path creator does. The longer the path, the more lag you generate, and the greater the danger of crashing your system. And also, as I pointed out during the build exercise, you have to do more work when you're building the course so that players will know where to go, since they can't just follow the road. Because <laughs> there is no road. But it's a useful toy, and I hope this tutorial helps you see its potential. Thanks for watching. Before you go, please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, or at least found it helpful, and leave a comment to let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next episode. Have a great weekend!